coming to you from sunny Orlando, Florida. Welcome to the Paper Stack Podcast, where we cover current topics in the note industry, give you tactics for your note business, and talk with industry leaders to make you a better note investor. And now, your hosts, Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. We got Rick Allen and Brett Berkey here today. I think we got something special. What we got today to talk about? What little tidbits of information are we going to put out there? Today, we're going to talk about the vendors you need to have in your arsenal. When you're in the node space, there's going to be certain people you're going to have to lean on. And uh, there's some important ones you want either when you're first starting out, make sure you have them set up. Maybe it's not always the case, but at least when you're starting to start investing, some are very vital that you get before you own that first node. And we're going to break them down. And I don't think these are in order of importance, but just what you should have. And I'm going to let Rick start with number one. Yeah, so we're going to do a list, right? A vendor list. Yeah. First one, I think, is the inventory list. Where are you getting your inventory from? Because this is what's going to kick off that whole thing. Obviously, paper stack or trading platforms is some something that's going to be on that list. But you want to know, I don't know if you're working with a broker or you're working getting inventory directly from banks. If you are, let's talk. Probably you're going to be starting on paper stack. Maybe probably finishing on paper stack, too. We have a lot of inventory coming in. But definitely that inventory is the first thing that you're looking for that you want to have that list of where my source and inventory. The second thing is going to be you want to have a servicer list, right? Yeah. You want to find out who are the servicers in the game, compare, contrast, look at them, identify them. You need to have that list of servicer vendors and know that each servicer has their own strengths and their own weaknesses. Learn who's better at doing performing stuff and who, who's better for the non-performing. And also know which states that they service in. There's a, there's a list that starts with NHLW. It's a long thing, but if you ask about it in the comments, I'll link to it. But it's, We'll just go ahead and put it in the comments. Or we can do that the, too. We can do that show too. notes. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically, a, if you put in any servicer, it'll pull back the states they're licensed in. So if you only buy nodes in certain states, just make sure that servicer you're talking to is on that list. The next thing, the next vendor you want to have on speed dial or at least have their website is somebody that's going to provide you with BPOs or valuations. Very important. It's a, it's a great tool that you're going to just have to have in your tool belt as a note investor. And that is knowing where you can order one, two, three, multiple valuations on a given asset. That's just super important. And you're going to want to have more than one vendor out there because sometimes you need to order multiple valuations of the same asset because the valuation that you get could, you, you think is wrong. And so you're like, look, I need, a, I need another valuation. And sometimes I've heard of people ordering three or four. Yeah, because you want to be sure of your value. You may order a valuation and one comes in at, you think it's worth 100 and one comes in at 70. And then you're like, that's way lower than I thought. Let me order another one. And one comes in at 130. And that's way higher than you thought. So you order like a third one or a fourth one for tiebreakers. Huh. Interesting. So you wouldn't, I would have imagined if you ordered the BPO, you'd look at why, where, how far out are they quoting? Are they quoting right around the corner or are they quoting 20 miles down the street? It's crazy. The broker price evaluations can be wildly different. That's, yeah, that's just, that just seems strange. And I guess you could always back it up with your own valuations of going and seeing what's sold on Zillow, looking at- you, you could, but that's probably how you came to your thought on what's the value of this property right, right now. Before you got the BPO. Before you got the BPO. So true. it's always best to have some boots on the ground, take a look at it. So you want to have multiple vendors for BPOs. Okay. And next thing that you would actually probably always do after you order BPOs, you're ordering a title report, right? You want to have, this is somebody next in the vendor list. You want to have- and not just one vendor. Are you new to the mortgage note industry? Have you been wanting to learn the step-by-step -step process to purchase your first mortgage note? Well, you're in luck. We've convinced our CEO, Rick Allen, to break down everything he knows about mortgage note investing. Through a series of 50 videos, you'll get everything from start to finish of where to purchase notes, how to purchase notes, and all of Rick's investing techniques he has developed over the many years. From performing note tactics to non-performing notes, Rick gives you everything he knows about investing. Bonuses include our glossary of industry terms, Rick's own proprietary calculators he created to evaluate notes, discounts from our partners, our Rolodex of vendors, a private Facebook group, along with a lot more. 
We've packed so much content into the Academy to take you from beginner to expert in no time. To learn more about the Academy, go to academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. Again, that is academy.paperstack.com slash welcome. I, I have multiple vendors that we'll actually use to pull title and just to continuously keep them in check. Sometimes somebody pulls title and I've seen things get missed. So I want to have multiple different vendors in my list that I can lean on, especially if there's, if we're under a time crunch. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, sure. Legal. This is a very important one. There's, you're gonna, if you're in the no business, you're going to need attorneys, right? A lot of times your servicers will, can supply you with attorneys. What I've found is it's best that if you're focusing in a state that you just get an attorney that you work with. One, it ends up saving you money. Why? Because if I need to go run through all of the foreclosures I have or the bankruptcies I have going on, if I've got one attorney who's got six cases with me, I'm picking up the phone and I'm just going through and ripping through six cases versus me picking up the phone six different times for six different attorneys who are going to charge me a minimum of a half hour or something along those lines. You know what I mean? I get it, yeah. And attend if you have repeat business going on with attorneys, they tend to work with you on pricing. Right. So multiple attorneys, you want to have multiple kinds of attorneys because not everybody just does, not everybody does foreclosure and bankruptcy. Oh. Those okay. can be two separate kinds of attorneys. So you want to make sure that you've got multiple different vendors or multiple different attorneys in your vendor list. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah there are a lot of times they'll cover multiple states too, though. Yes. They will yeah, call. So you have some attorney firms that can cover multiple states. You'll have some of the bigger nationwide ones. Well, they'll have three or four states. They'll cover Ohio, Illinois, and the, a bunch of states in the Midwest. Okay. If you find one of those. And then George Newberry's actually got a network of some sort. Yeah. He's got an attorney network that they can actually run point for you and manage all your attorneys. Oh, we've talked to them. Yeah. I, forget. I can't think of their name. Something legal. Yeah. Property preservation. Another list of vendors that you're going to want to have. And the reason for that is, is if you've got multiple assets, Winter time, you got to winterize them. If they're NPL, you got to keep the lawn cut. If somebody breaks in, you got to have somebody go over there, change the locks. You got to have somebody to board things up. So property preservation is another vendor that you want to put, search for, get them, put them in your arsenal because you will use them. If you start working with non-performing loans, it's guaranteed you're going to need a... Wow. So a lot of these things really come into play when you're servicer, definitely, BPO, OED. Performing, not performing, same. But when you're really talking legal, property preservation, mm -hmm. and things like that. You're in the game. Yeah. And these are things you're going to need to have. But those are not performing a lot more. If you're just buying a performing, no. Sure. Performing, you can have a performing loan that's in BK13. You're going to need to have a lawyer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So a lot of times you may inherit a lawyer with a case. It's a great way to speed date and see if you like where they were. Yeah. It, it's true. So the next thing up, this is called the... I use them kind of hand in hand. They go, they are packaged together, but real estate agents slash boots on the ground. Explain boots on the ground. Somebody who's a, a warm body, somebody with a pulse that's in the area that can go handle things that need to be done with a property. Okay. Uh, maybe they need to do a bar reach out. Maybe you're sorting out something where you're doing loss mitigation and they're signing the house over to you. You're going to go ahead and need them you need boots on the ground, somebody to reach out to the borrower, be able to talk to them, get a paper signed. So that's something that I would recommend. A, a nice book of real estate agents and or boots on the ground. Interesting. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. And then the last one, this is a bunch of services all combined in the one, like a document custodian who's going to hold on to your collateral file, but also somebody who can generate documents. They can intake collateral files when you get them to inventory them, and then they can record any sort of assignments or allonges, not allonges, assignments, or quick claim deeds, stuff along those lines. It's that's somebody you want to have that in your arsenal because every time there's a transfer, it's going to need to happen. Interesting. Okay. So that's, does it sounds daunting a little bit? It's a lot, but you want to, you don't want to come into the, you want to be prepared. These are all things that's going to happen. And once you get into the forums, get on the Facebook, get into bigger pockets, start talking to people, asking. We've got a list we can share with you. Yeah, we got a list that we, it's in under our knowledge base. If you go to the site, we do have a lot of information that is 
some a lot of it's geared towards transactions on paper stacks. You have stuff for the buyers, stuff for the sellers, stuff for just account management. But there are other things that are things. This is for buyers. It'll, it's underneath the buyers area, educators, books. I've got yeah, I've got a list of just of links, tons and tons of links to do to pull statistical data to look at crime rates and all that stuff. So I'm happy to put that out there and let people use it. Yeah, we'll put a link to it. It'll be right under this video. And uh, yeah, get on the way down to clicking the link, there's a little subscribe button too. Did that, we're trying to increase the subscribers and you'd be doing us a great honor and favor. So we'd appreciate that. Is that pretty much everything we got there? That's it. That's it for this Snackable. We'll see you on the next episode. All right. Probably wearing the same shirt. <laughs> see ya. See ya.